saying they will not leave an Oregon wildlife refuge. The reason? They believe officials unfairly punish ranchers that refuse to sell their land. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chelsea Brenzel. In rural Oregon tonight, the new year is off to an unsettling start. Armed protesters angry at the federal government have seized control of a national wildlife refuge. Their rage runs deep, and they say they are determined to be heard. ABC's Kendon Gibson has tonight's top story. With grievances and with guns, dozens of armed militia members have taken over a federal building in the Oregon backcountry. This refuge here is rightfully owned by the people. We intend to use it. They moved in on the building Saturday. It is the duty of the people to put that government back in its place. One of their grievances, the sentencing of two local ranchers for arson who are in a dispute with the federal government over land rights. The principles that we are here are based upon the Constitution of the United States. Bundy, along with his father, Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy, were involved in a standoff with the government over grazing rights two years ago. Back up. You're gonna get back. Bundy says they have come with generators and other supplies, apparently, preparing for siege-like conditions. He says the protesters will stay put until the local government gives the two ranchers safe haven from the federal government. Local schools have been closed for the week, and the local law enforcement is urging people to stay away. They also issued a statement accusing the militias of an attempt to overthrow the county and federal government in hopes to spark a movement across the United States. Tensions are running high. Bringing in a militant view, saying we're going to rise up if we don't get our way, we're going to use armed resistance. That's just not right. Those two ranchers say they will turn themselves in peacefully Monday. Candace Gibson, ABC News, New York. The attorney for the Hammond family sent a statement to the Harney County Sheriff saying, quote, neither Ammon Bundy nor anyone within his group or organization speak for the Hammond family, end quote. Time to check in with forecaster Chris Nesman. Chris, people are getting back to work tomorrow. How are things going to look for them? You know, Telsey, tomorrow morning, actually not too bad. Very similar to today, mostly cloudy skies, but temperatures... Decent, at least for this time of year. Certainly not as cold as we have seen. Take a look right now at Idle Falls, 10 degrees, better than 10 below or 15 below, but still so chilly for January, but normal. Now, looking at Viper Radar, notice a few showers and storms off the Pacific Coast, some already moving inland in Washington State. Those will be making their way our direction, so we're not going to stay dry for long. In the meantime, temperatures chilly in Rexburg, cold in Jackson at zero. But not too bad in Blackfoot and Pocatello, 18 and 20, respectively, in tens in the Central Mountains if you look up towards Chalice and Salmon. And overall, the winds aren't too bad either. So no wind chills to look at, no super chilly temperatures. Average low for tonight, 9 degrees, plus or minus a few, depending on where you are. And now, as far as an update from a story we had earlier, four people are dead and more than 100 injured after a major earthquake rattles northeast India. The U.S. Geological Survey says the 6.7 magnitude struck just a few hours ago. The most impacted was a rural area of India's far eastern Manipur state. The regional capital, Impal, with about a quarter million people, is located nearly 20 miles away and reported shaking, but no initial reports of injuries or deaths in that city have been notified. We'll have more on this earthquake as we learn it later today. A private plane runs off a Jackson Hole Airport runway, causing the airport to shut down. It happened late last night after the plane blew a tire while landing. Jackson police say the plane ran off the end of the airstrip, and the airport was closed while it was towed out of the snow. No major damage or injuries have been reported. Now at 10, freezing and alone, a California man rescued after being lost out of bounds at Utah's Powder Mountain Resort. Tonight, he's crediting not only the ski patrol for his rescue, but his faith in God that he says helped get him through. Mac McDonald has his incredible story of survival. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lost and alone after skiing out of bounds at Powder Mountain Resort, Michael Nessel recited part of the Bible over and over. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He had intermittent cell phone service, eventually getting a text out to his wife. So I text her back saying, hey, call Powder Mountain. I'm lost in Powder Country. Ski Patrol started a search with a rough idea of where Michael was last known to be skiing. When you're riding some of these areas, sometimes the lodge is down, sometimes the lodge is up. So it is quite confusing. Darkness set in. Michael continued to pray. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He followed tracks in the snow, hoping it would lead him to safety. 
So I was skiing down the hill with my phone in my hand with the light on and, you know, poles in the other hand. I almost hit a tree on the way down. It led him nowhere. I kind of stood for about 10 minutes yelling help. They located a lot of different tracks that, that uh, circled around, uh, backtracked. Uh, they, they just were really confusing tracks for several hours. Building a makeshift shelter under a tree, he continued to pray. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Nearing midnight, he finally heard voices and saw the lights of rescue crews heading his way. He was cold, um, obviously with the temperatures being four degrees. Um, he was very cold. Minor frostbite on his toes, but otherwise okay. Michael credits rescue crews. Great job on their part, and you know they did a really great job, and I, I'm thankful for that. And his faith. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. For saving his life. Ski Patrol says in the past week they've rescued two other people after going out of bounds. They want to take this opportunity to urge skiers at any mountain to become familiar with the terrain and to watch out for boundary signs. In other news around the region, two teenage girls found after their mother reported them missing a year and a half ago. The thing is, they weren't really missing. Police found the girls in the mother's Pleasant Grove apartment. Their mother, Sonia Wolfert's, in jail on several charges tonight. She reported Danielle and Sydney Wolfert's as runaways back in July of 2014. At the time, the girls' fathers, who lived in Kansas, had custody of the teens. Police say back in 2014, 15-year-old Daniel, Danielle and 16-year-old Sydney were in Utah visiting their mother. They were expected to return back to Kansas on July 17th. And that is when they disappeared. The mother told investigators she dropped them off at the mall, but when she went to pick them up, they never showed. Fast forward to 3 a.m. this morning at Pleasant Grove Police Department, they received a tip that the girls were living with their mother. The sister says the two teens, she understands why the sisters were hiding out. They ran away because my dad has been our abuser for our entire lives. Um, I'm currently 20 years old. I moved out when I was 18. And it was a joint decision with me and Sydney and Danny that the only reason I was moving out was to get them out or else I would have stayed with them in his custody even, even though I didn't want to. Kansas police notified the father that their daughters were found. While preparing for the 2016 legislative session, Wyoming lawmakers are bracing for what promises to be a bruising budget session starting in February. Right now, the state capitol is undergoing a renovation project, so as lawmakers draw up the state's budget, they will be crammed into an office building in Cheyenne. The main dilemma on everyone's mind? Funding operations for the next two years. House Speaker Kermit Brown says the budget is at the top of the list. Despite Wyoming's projected declines in energy revenue, there is little support for raising taxes. But some lawmakers predict that the state will have to consider doing just that. In the Gem State, it's no secret that rejected proposals haunt the halls of the Idaho State House. Tax reform failures and botched education funding formulas are common ghost tales among lawmakers and lobbyists. Yet the ideas that form these doomed legislative efforts, they rarely die. Why, you ask? It boils down to patience. Most ideas take years to take root inside the Idaho legislature before gaining enough support to clear in both houses. With the start of the 2016 legislative session just a week away, Idaho lawmakers may once again review possible tax cuts and discuss appropriate education funding levels. And, just in like years past, lawmakers try to find solutions to the state's criminal defense system. But it's uncertain if any comprehensive action will be made in the next three months. It's the new year, and with that comes resolutions. People flocking back into the gym to say goodbye to the pounds packed on by the holidays. Now at 10, Local News 8's Esme Carriega has some tips, making sure your wallet also doesn't get a workout when you head to get back in shape. Studies show one of the top resolutions of the new year. The new year starts that way you start clean, you start fresh. But did you know you don't have to break the bank in order to break a sweat? Budget and how you want to work with things. First tip to save you some money is negotiate. See what type of plans they have that best fits you. And if you're part of a group seeking to get in shape, ask the right questions. Like are there family or group discounts? Uh, we have a buy one get one free enrollment. So... Uh, you can either split the enrollment or one of you can pay full enrollment, the other one can pay zero enrollment. By asking the right questions, you can sometimes find out about promotions that haven't yet been advertised. But we also do discounts on enrollment with our finance memberships. World Gym Assistant Manager Victor Santiago says January is when you see all kinds of promotions. Normally it's $99.99 to enroll. 
plus your first month, okay? And then uh, we do have specials going on that with Facebook. If you like us on Facebook, we can give you discounts on the enrollment. Think about what membership you really need. You don't want to get stuck paying for a membership you don't use. One way you can keep your New Year's resolution is by looking into a personal trainer, right? So the trainers, they keep you on track. They motivate you. They hold you accountable. Reporting from Idaho Falls, I'm Esme Curiega. Don't forget, some gyms do offer free trial passes for the day, and that's the perfect way to get a better feel for the gym before you sign on the dotted line. There's still much more to come on Local News 8 at 10. Hillary Clinton created ISIS with Obama. The road to the White House heats up. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump spent his weekend firing shots at Hillary Clinton, the latest on the 2016 presidential race. And if you're sick of the cold weather, this warm-up, relatively speaking, has been really nice. But what if you're not a snow fan, or what if you are a snow fan? Some of you will love the forecast, some of you will hate it, but I'll have the details coming up. Watching Local News 8 at 10. Local people, local news. And now, Chris Nesman with your first alert forecast. All right, so our, it's still, excuse me, in Pocatello at this hour, things aren't too bad. 20 degrees in the Gate City from our Farm Bureau Skycam. Winds fairly light west-northwest at 6 miles an hour. And across the region, a lot of single digits, a lot of double digits, but no negatives, at least right now. Jackson, of course, flirting with it at zero right now. But 20 in Blackfoot and Pocatello, 20, 27 in Burley. Still fairly chilly in the Central Mountains, 10 in Salmon. Unfortunately, folks in Salmon, they'll be sticking with the chilly air a little bit longer than everyone else as that cold air is kind of very stubborn in Limahai County. And again, winds haven't been much of an issue, which that is a nice thing. Now, looking at Viper Radar, the big picture shows we've got something going on in Washington. You can see kind of something popping up on the coast of California. Hard to see with Viper Radar, but looking at the satellite radar, yeah, we got a storm moving in. So this is part one, part two, and then if you can just see on the horizon of the globe, part three, of a series of storms moving in, none of them directly hitting our region, but they will be passing by and we'll be getting kind of the side punches of these storms as they come through, starting Tuesday. So Monday morning, not a whole lot going on. Monday evening, might still a little something fire up in the Central Mountains, and then watch as we move into Tuesday, really starts to spread out, and I'd say widespread showers on Tuesday, and especially kind of Blackfoot, Pocatello, it could be more rain-snow mix, come afternoon hours as temperatures are just warm enough that not quite snow. Wednesday, same thing, a little bit more snow, especially the northern Snake River Plain. I think will be mostly snow by then. But you saw another wave came through. And with all these waves, we're getting inch here, an inch there, dusting here, that kind of thing. Though a few isolated locations could get a couple more inches 
as these storms move through. Tonight's lows, chilly in Salmon at 6 below. How about 9 in Island Park? 11s, very, very common. Idaho Falls, not quite a little bit optimistic. Same thing with Pocatello. I'd say knock a few degrees off the Pocatello reading. 13 in Soda Springs, 9 in Montpelier, and 9 for folks in Afton. Now, tomorrow's highs, not too bad. How about 32 Afton, 36 Lava Hot Springs, 35 in Pocatello. So you can see just above freezing, so precipitation that does move through, which Monday I think we're fine, but Tuesday it'll be more rain-snow mix for parts of the Snake River Plain. And if we move to the Central Mountains, still chilly in salmon. They're kind of locked with that cold air a couple more days longer than everyone else, but eventually it will clear out for them. Looking at the eight-day forecast, mostly cloudy conditions tomorrow for Idaho Falls. Rain snow mix on Tuesday, switching over to snow come evening hours, and then I think we'll stick with off and on snow showers Wednesday onward for IF. Moving south towards Pocatello, 30% chance on Tuesday, a good 60% chance on Wednesday. So count on some rain snow showers for Pocatello on Wednesday, Le obviously leaning towards snow as you get higher in elevation, and then off and on snow showers Thursday through the weekend with clearing conditions a week from tomorrow, but chillier temperatures. Same thing goes for Blackfoot as far as rain snow mix on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Blackfoot will also stick to mainly snow showers Thursday onward with no big wallops expected just off and on after Wednesday. Rexburg eight-day forecast. 33 tomorrow, 36 on Tuesday, and then back into the 30s and 20s Wednesday onward. 30 to 40 percent chance for most of the days. Salmon eight-day forecast. 20 to 30 percent chance every day. Chilly the next few days, and then salmon finally kicks the cold air bucket and warms up to the mid-20s by the end of the week. Finally, Jackson, Wyoming, off and on snow shower. Same thing Tuesday through Sunday. So hopefully the ski resort gets a few fresh inches. Yeah, last year Mother Nature around this time was confused as to if it was winter or not. We had our you know. <laughs> I just warmest. remember doing a live shot and only needing this suit coat and tell you the past couple of days this is not cut it outside. Right, so. no, it's definitely Mother Nature reminding us that it is winter. It's time. winter. Next on local news eight at ten. Hillary Clinton stands up to a woman in New Hampshire today as Donald Trump faces questions about being featured in a terror group video. Plus, all these executive orders he's going to come out with tomorrow that are going to undermine our Second Amendment rights on my first day in office, they're gone. As President Obama is expected to announce new executive action on tougher gun control laws, 2016 candidates are firing back. Get first alert weather anytime on demand. Log on to localnews8.com. With less than a month to go, candidates for the 2016 presidential election are entering the final stretch to the Iowa caucuses. And today, new finger pointing. A terrorism recruiting video has surfaced featuring Donald Trump. ABC's Mary Bruce is in Washington with how this could impact the campaign trail. In New Hampshire today, Hillary Clinton standing up to a heckler. You are very rude, and I'm not going to ever call on you. As she comes under attack by Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton created ISIS with Obama. 
The billionaire turned Republican frontrunner spent his weekend firing shots at Clinton at a rally in Mississippi on Twitter and on TV. I have more respect for women by far than Hillary Clinton has. But Trump also facing questions about this video by the terror group Al Shabaab, the Al Qaeda affiliate using a clip of Trump in one of its recruitment messages. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. On CBS News's Face the Nation, Trump made clear he's not changing his message about Muslims in America. Does it concern you at all that you're being used in a, essentially a recruitment video? I mean, what am I going to do? I have to say what I have to say. He is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. During the last Democratic debate, Clinton said Trump's language is aiding terror groups like ISIS, but provided no evidence. Hillary Clinton has to be tempted to say, told you so, uh, when this video emerges. But she has to be careful, because she did overstate the facts on the debate stage a few weeks ago. Clinton's Democratic rival, Senator Bernie Sanders, did not address the video, but he did say Trump needs to be called out. Trump really is over the edge. Uh, time after time, this guy just comes up with things off the top of his head that, that are lies. And somebody has got to say that he is a pathological liar. New fire in the fight for the White House. Mary Bruce, ABC News, Washington. This week marks the first time former President Bill Clinton will be campaigning for his life. He hits the trail tomorrow in New Hampshire. Now to a controversial issue. Whether you're for it or against it, President Obama is kicking off the new year with an aggressive push for tighter gun control. Expanding background checks will be a keystone of the president's actions. Chris Freight reports that it has some Republican presidential hopefuls on attack. A few months ago, I directed my team at the White House to look into any new actions I can take to help reduce gun violence. And on Monday, I'll meet with our Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, to discuss our options. Because I get too many letters from parents and teachers and kids to sit around and do nothing. Sources say President Obama is expected to announce new executive action soon, expanding background checks on gun sales, aimed at closing the so-called gun show loophole, which allows some gun sellers to avoid conducting a background check. Gun control advocates have also pushed the White House to tighten regulations on the reporting of lost and stolen guns and want the president to prevent more alleged domestic abusers and passengers on the no-fly list from buying guns. But before the president has even announced the details of his actions, Republicans running to replace him were seemingly competing on who would undo them faster. So he's going to sign another executive order having to do with the Second Amendment, having to do with guns. I will veto that. I will unsign that so fast. So fast. All these executive orders he's going to come out with tomorrow that are going to undermine our Second Amendment rights on my first day in office, they're gone. And Jeb Bush argued that there was no need to expand background checks because... The so-called gun, uh, gun show loophole, which is, I think, what he's talking about, doesn't exist. People that want to sell randomly, you know, occasionally sell guns ought to have the right to do so without being impaired by, uh, by the federal government. Democrats have applauded Obama's efforts. On Sunday, Bernie Sanders, whose Democratic rivals have called him weak on gun control, endorsed increased background checks. But I think most gun owners in this country uh, understand that people who should not own guns should not be able to buy them. And we do need to expand the instant background check. I don't think that's an onerous burden on anybody. Measuring Americans' attitudes on gun control seems to depend on how you ask the question. In a recent CNN poll, a majority said they do not support stricter gun control laws or the president's handling of guns. However, in a Quinnipiac survey, an overwhelming majority 89% to be exact said they support requiring background checks for everyone purchasing a gun. Coming up, the NFL regular season wrapped up today, and Julia Cox explains what the playoff season might look like when we return. Local people, local news. You're watching Local News 8 at 10. Because the Idaho legislature won, that was when the video went weird, right? Okay. Just those, and I don't want to record the whole packages, just like the intro. Like the first one, the speed of rescue, and, um, yeah.
Thank you. Sorry. Silly Carl. You're watching Sports Line with Julia Cox. Yesterday, the Boise State Broncos men's basketball team opened up conference play against Colorado State and they narrowly escaped with a win. Boise State led by 14 points at the half, but the Rams were able, or the <laughs> Colorado State was able to cut the deficit to just two with 37 seconds left. The Broncos were able to get the 84 to 80 victory, though starting out conference play 1 0. Here's what head coach Leon Rice had to say after the game. Everything didn't go right, and we didn't drop our heads and and say, "Oh no, here it goes." They we just kept plugging away and got the job done. Uh, it's a good confidence booster, but we know uh, we're going to get everybody's best shot. So we just got to keep sticking with it and keep getting better. The Broncos are now 10 and 4 overall and travel to Utah State on Tuesday, this Tuesday, January 5th. Over to the NFL now. Believe it or not, we've reached the last week of the regular season, and there was still a lot to be determined today for a lot of teams. But a team that was already in the playoffs is Washington, and they played Dallas today. And there's Dallas head coach Jason Garrett ready, getting ready for today's matchup. 24 seconds left in the first quarter. It's 14 0 Washington, and Kirk Cousins throws the three yard touchdown to Jamison Crowder. And Cousins is the first Washington quarterback to throw three TDs in the first quarter. It's 21 0. Second quarter, Kellen Moore, the Boise State Broncos alum, throws it to Jason Witten. It was ruled that he was out of bounds and didn't get into the end zone. But as we take another look, yeah, he crossed the plane. So re rack, the call was reversed. It's a touchdown, and the Cowboys. Boys are on the board. 26 seconds left in the first half now. It's 24 to 7 Washington. And Moore finds Cole Beasley in the end zone for the touchdown. It's 24 to 14 Washington. Third quarter, it's 27 to 14 Washington. Kellen Moore drops back to pass, but he's taken down by the Washington pass rush. And then at the start of the fourth quarter, the same score, Cole McCoy in for Cousins. He throws the 71 yard touchdown pass to Rashad Ross. For the touchdown, the Redskins sack Cousins to make sure he doesn't get injured and is ready for their playoff game next week. And Washington wins the game 34 to 23. Over to Richard Sherman and the Seahawks getting it going, getting ready to take on Arizona. First quarter, no st no score, and Christine Michael pops off to the right side and gets loose for the 45-yard gain, which would eventually lead to a Seahawks touchdown, making it 7-0. To the second quarter, it's 10-0 Seahawks. And Carson Palmer to Larry Fitzgerald for the 17-yard touchdown pass. It's 10-6 Seattle. Still in the second quarter, the same score. And Russell, Russell Wilson floats the 7-yard touchdown pass to Will Tukawafu. Tying the franchise record for most touchdown passes in a season at 32 and the second quarter at 17-6 Hawks. And it's Wilson again finding Chase Kaufman for the eight-yard touchdown. So Wilson set a new franchise record with his 33rd touchdown pass of the year. It's 24-6. And you know what? Why not add to it? With another touchdown, it's Wilson throwing a strike to Jermaine Curse for yet another touchdown. That made it 30 to 6, and Seattle will go on to win by that score. Wilson broke another record as well, becoming the first quarterback in Seattle, Seattle's franchise history to throw for 4,000 yards in a single season. Over the Broncos taking on the Chargers, and look who it is! It's Peyton Manning. He didn't start the game, but he would replace Brock Osweiler, who struggled today. Third quarter, Broncos are down 13 to 7 with the number one seed on the line, and it's C.J. Anderson with the one-yard touchdown. 
touchdown run. So it's 14 to 13 Broncos. To the fourth quarter, it's 17 to 13 Broncos. And Philip River hits up Tyrell Williams for the 80 yard touchdown pass. So it would be 20 to 17 San Diego. The Broncos managed to tie the game at 20. There's less than five to go now. And Ronnie Hillman gets the handoff and runs it 23 yards into the end zone. The Broncos win the game 27 to 20 and clinch the number one seed and the first round bye. Taking a look at some of the other teams in the playoffs in the AFC. In the East, New England, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Houston, Denver, and Kansas City. And like I said, Denver has that first round bye, and so does New England. Looking at the AFC wild card round, the Steelers will play the Bengals. Bengals will host, and the Texans will host the Chiefs. Looking at the other NFC teams in the playoffs, it, we have Washington, Green Bay, Minnesota, Carolina, Arizona, and Seattle. And Carolina and Arizona, both with the first round bye and the NFC wild card round. The Vikings will host the Seahawks, and the Redskins will host the Packers. That'll do it for sports. We'll be right back after this. Local people, local news. You're watching Local News 8 at 10. Look out, Adele. Hello from the newest internet sensation, three year old Kimber Green from Great Falls. This is her singing the British singer's hit single, Hello. The toddler's original YouTube video already has over 11 million views. Her mother just posted it online for family and friends, never expecting it to go viral. Kimber listens to all types of music from Miranda Lambert to Justin Bieber and everything in between. She is adorable, though. I. <laughs> Just when she was holding out that no, I. It's, she got some pipes on it's her. It's hard not to smile. I love it. I got love some it. pipes I on her. It. People's pipes might be freezing tonight because it's gonna be cold. A little not bit warmer. Not nearly as cold as we have. That's been. true. If they didn't freeze over the past few days. I think you're in the clear at least for the next couple of days. Though snow showers, rain snow mix probably not all falls at least on Tuesday. Wednesday onward though, more snow showers off and on throughout the week. And by the end of the week, we could see few inches of new snow by about Sunday. 
Pocatello at day forecast, rain, snow mix Tuesday, Wednesday. And, and a correction on our sports, the Steelers will be playing the Cincinnati Bengals, not the Broncos. Have a good night. <laughs>Good evening, everyone. I'm Chelsea Brenzel. In rural Oregon, the new year is... I start... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, now I'm all thrown off. My bad. <laughs>
Now at 10, freezing and alone, a California man rescued after being lost out of bounds at Utah's Powder Mountain Resort. Tonight, he's crediting not only the ski patrol for his rescue, but his faith in God that he says helped him get through. Matt McDonald has his incredible story of survival. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lost and alone after skiing out of bounds at Powder Mountain Resort, Michael Nessel recited part of the Bible over and over. He makes me to lie down and While preparing for the 2016 legislative session, Wyoming lawmakers are bracing for what promises to be a bruising budget session starting in February. Right now, the state capitol is undergoing a renovation project, so as lawmakers draw up the state's budget, they will be crammed into an office building in Cheyenne. The main dilemma on everyone's mind, funding operations for the next two years. House Speaker Kermit Brown says the budget is at the top of the list. Despite Wyoming's projected declines in energy revenue, there's little support for raising those taxes, but some lawmakers predict the state will have to consider doing just that. In the Gem State, it's no secret that rejected proposals haunt the halls of the Idaho State House. Tax reform failures and botched education funding formulas are common ghost tales among lawmakers and lobbyists. Yet the ideas that formed these doomed legislative efforts rarely die. Why, you ask? It boils down to patience. Most ideas take years to take route in the Idaho legislature before gaining enough support to clear in both houses. With the start of the 2016 legislative session just a week away, Idaho lawmakers may once again review possible tax cuts and discuss appropriate education funding levels. And just in like years past, lawmakers will try to find solutions to the state's criminal defense system. But it's uncertain if any comprehensive action will be made in the next three months. It's the new year, and with that comes resolutions. People flocking back into the gym to say goodbye to the pounds packed on at the holidays. Now at 10, local news aide's Esme Carriega has some tips making sure your wallet also doesn't get a workout when you head back to get in shape. Studies show one of the